Hey everyone, welcome back to Nintendo Prime. It feels really good to be back in our studio, uh, even though it was a hell of a vacation. For those who don't know, I've been gone the entire last week on vacation. Me and my fiance went on a, a four or five day cruise. It was it was really, really relaxing, really great. We did come home to our basement flooded, including our studio because our hot water heater burst. But, you know, life is what it is. Uh, as you can see, I'm alive and kicking and our house didn't burn down, even though it almost did. So, uh, we talked about that last night on stream. Don't really feel like revisiting it. So instead, let's revisit the actual news today. Uh, we have some updates on the Nintendo Direct stuff, right? We've been talking about a rumored, a reported, a leaked, whatever you want to call it. You know, back the, the truckloads of salt up and all that. Put your tinfoil caps on. Uh, look, the bottom line is I have no idea if we're getting another Nintendo Direct this month. Right. We had the Xenoblade Chronicles 3 Direct last week, and typically when we get that sort of Direct, we don't get anything else. Uh, but Nintendo has been doing Directs in June every single year besides 2020 when there was no E3. There also was no E3 this year. And here we are towards the end of June, and we still don't have a general Nintendo Direct. So there's been a lot of rumors around this, a lot of reports from different media outlets. Uh, Alana Pierce said the next Direct would be on the 29th. Uh, Nate the Hate's been saying 28th, 29th, depends on your time zone, uh, but we won't specify which direct it is, well, until yesterday. Uh, and then we have Video Game Chronicle, Tom Henderson saying, hey, there would be something, then kind of backing off it. Uh, it it's been a really weird, weird ride. However, here's what's not so weird about this ride. Well, how about the fact that uh, we now possibly know what this direct is? And we know some possible games in this direct. Now, Nate the Hate mentioned uh, the other day, a few days ago, uh, that there would be, well, Mario plus Rabbids Kingdom Metal news next week. Okay, that would make sense. To, not Kingdom Metal, Sparks of Hope. Mario Bros. plus Rabbids Sparks of Hope news next week. And that would make a lot of sense to actually appear in Nintendo Direct 2022 game. Mario's in the damn game. Yeah, we need a date for that. Uh, but you mentioned he wasn't so sure about Bayonetta 3. Maybe Bayonetta 3 would be there, maybe not. Hasn't really heard anything. But it would make sense to have Bayonetta 3 there. Uh, but what he has said today, uh, and I'm, I have the tweets loaded up right in front of me here, uh, at least yesterday, he said, to my understanding, it's a direct mini partner, and its main focus will be third party. That doesn't mean Nintendo will have no presence. They've had some presence in prior partners, just in a limited capacity. And I, I obviously find that to be interesting comments because, you know, they really haven't had a presence in the partner ones. That's usually the big complaint is that Nintendo doesn't have a sort of presence. He does clarify later on the family board forums that what he means by presence is there could be like Nintendo published games that are made by third party companies. That would be Bayonetta 3, right? Like Bayonetta 3 is a game made by Platinum where the IP itself is owned by uh, by Sega, but Nintendo owns the publishing rights to Bayonetta 2 and Bayonetta 3. So that would be an example of a partner game. And I think that's the sort of games he's trying to set up our expectations for. Is we might not hear about Nintendo first party. So don't no Breath of the Wild 2, no Splatoon 3, stuff like that. But we could hear about new partner games coming from other companies. And this is where we get to a report that I popped up on Video Game Chronicle yesterday, uh, where they have a source on this that's from an interesting place. It's an actual journalist, uh, but it, it, it's weird. So let's just read the exact quotes. So, so uh, according to an experienced journalist named Nacho Requina, and I'm probably butchering the name, uh, that are an editor of a Spanish games magazine called Manuel, uh, told viewers during a Twitch stream on Friday that he'd been told to expect new announcements from major publishers. I quote, here's exact quotes as translated by Video Game Chronicles. If this translation is bad, I apologize. I don't speak that the, the native uh, tongue of Spanish. We should have a Nintendo Direct this coming Tuesday. Tuesday would be the 28th. Uh, Requina said during the live stream, and this was translated by Video Game Chronicle. This will be mainly focused on third-party games. That's what I've been told to expect. I've also been told that some Persona game will be present. Remember, we just had 3, 4, and 5 announced for the Xbox. So, hey, are we going to get 3, 4, and 5 for Switch? Maybe. I've also been told there will be another game that's been available for some time on other platforms, and it's been available for four years now. Some people are pointing to Red Dead Redemption 2. Video Game Chronicle does as well. Video Game Chronicle then goes on to basically assume that this is going to be a N Nintendo Direct Mini Partner Showcase. Uh, which, by the way, we got like three of those in 2020. Uh, people tend to not, not like them because they wanted first-party stuff. 
thing is, we know some first party games coming. We know Breath of the Wild 2 is in early 2023. Uh, Pokemon does its own thing. So they're going to, you know, we had a new trailer at the beginning of this month for Pokemon Scarlet and Violet. So I think it's going to be a bit before we hear about that again. Uh, we obviously just had a direct for Xenoblade Chronicles 3 that comes out next month. Uh, Live Alive would be a partner game that would probably show up in a direct like this. Uh, Splatoon 3, you know, we'll probably, once they get. Uh, into August, we'll probably start hearing a lot of news about Splatoon 3. So Nintendo's got a pretty decent lineup the rest of this year, as is. And if you could fill it in with partner games like Bayonetta 3, uh, the Persona releases maybe, uh, maybe apparently a port of a four-year-old game that's a really, really big game, uh, that you know that, that could really fit the bill as well. So you throw all that together, and hey, it ends up being a pretty solid lineup the rest of the year. Obviously, multi-platform games, you know, Nintendo isn't really the system you buy if you care a ton about multi-platform games. Uh, it's the system you buy if you want indie games on the go, which you can also get a Steam Deck for that. Uh, and you, you know, you get it to, to enjoy Nintendo stuff. Yeah, that's mainly the gist of it. There was an appeal for a little bit of third-party games on the go, but technically that's better on Steam Deck, even though Steam Deck's really hard to get. So Nintendo's appeal is really their own stuff and maybe some really cool indies like Fall Guys, you know, being free to play on Switch now. And I believe the servers for Fall Guys are working now. Quote me on that. Also, by the way, uh, remember Mario Strikers Battle League? Well, I haven't dived into the club stuff yet, but hey, our club was number one ranked in our division as of like yesterday. So cool. We're kicking ass there, too. So Nintendo's got games. Uh, we just had Fire Emblem Warriors Three Hopes drop. Um, I currently am installing it. It's actually installing on my Switch right now. Uh, so I, you know, we'll be checking that out eventually here as well and seeing if that holds up and if that's even better than the first Fire Emblem Warriors, which the gameplay was fine in that game, but there was some, you know, the story really wasn't too great. This one being tied to three houses, I think, makes a difference. So, look, what I'm basically trying to get at here is maybe this is just a tempering of expectations. Uh, no one is confirming 100% that it's going to be a direct mini partner besides uh, Nate the Hate. And by the way, he doesn't know that they're calling it a direct mini partner, just that it's to have that sort of expectation, right? Expect this direct to be focused on third party games including things that could be like Bayonetta 3, Sparks of Hope, which, by the way, Nate, Nate the Hates the one that said we're getting Sparks of Hope news next week. Like, that's like, that's happening. Uh, so, at least according to them. Uh, I obviously have no sources on any of this. I'm hyper-reliant on these insiders. And I do want to end this talk briefly. Briefly. By talking about covering rumors and covering uh, inside information from supposed insiders. Uh, I understand that there are a group of you out there, I see you guys in the comments, that really don't enjoy these kind of videos. And to that, I understand. Covering rumors, talking about rumors, speculating, um, you know, debating and, and having conversations about, you know, what may come uh, doesn't excite everyone. Like, talking about uh, this kind of stuff doesn't get everyone's brain churning in the way that it does for me. I really, really enjoy the conversations and the speculation and the reporting around all of this stuff. Even if it ends up not being true, which is unfortunate, say all the Switch Pro stuff last year, I still enjoyed the journey, the ride, the conversations, the debates, um, the, the deep dives into different hardware possibilities last year. Like I enjoyed all of that, even if in the end we ended up not getting what we hoped. And I know because a lot of people feel burned by the Switch Pro stuff that suddenly, you know, they're like, oh, I'm just kind of tired of all this. It's weird because we had the same speculation, hype and rumors around the last Nintendo Direct that did happen back in February and people weren't really complaining then. Uh, we had a lot of this hype and speculation, by the way, around the Switch Lite and hey, that ended up being completely true. So it's interesting watching this ebb and flow of, I think so many people bought into Switch Pro last year that they feel so burned that they're tired of these speculative conversations around possible things happening from supposed insiders like Nate the Hate who told us the Switch Pro was happening last year. So this is one of those things where I feel like people are just emotionally exhausted uh, when it comes to this kind of stuff. Personally, I've been covering rumors, guys, for 20 plus years. This isn't new to me. You want to call me Rumor Prime? I'm cool with that. I don't even find it an insult like some of you guys do. Um, I don't cover just rumors. I know this feels weird. Back to back videos covering rumors. Uh, I have an upcoming video that's actually dealing with something else. I had four videos in this last week that dealt with completely different things that weren't based on rumors. They were conversation pieces we had uh, and one one legit news story in there about a cancer patient. So I cover a wide variety of stuff. I just haven't been back to covering prime news where I'm slamming, you know, 
five, six stories into a video uh, because I've been having Prime Gaming Fest this month and then obviously I went into vacation. So, you know, putting those episodes together takes up a large chunk of time that I had to spend on other things at the channel or on my vacation. That all being said, what I can tell you right now is my next video isn't going to be about this kind of thing. Uh, it's actually going to be talking about something semi-related, although it's not just about rumors, uh, and that is clickbait. I want to have an open conversation on clickbait. I've had a conversation on this before, and I want to do a further one, a uh, specific YouTube channel that many people uh, detest for it, uh, did a video on it, and I, I watched and... I feel like I have something to add because obviously I'm accused of it all the time. I'm probably being accused of it on this very video. Uh, and I just want to talk about the ebb and flow of, of how all that works. All right. That's all. So I want to thank you guys so much uh, for tuning in. I hope you really enjoyed this video. Let me know your thoughts on what you expect to see in this showcase. If I get sparks of hope, I'm happy. That's like the big game I want. Nate the Hate says it's coming. I got no reason to doubt it. He's pretty firm on it. And I haven't heard Emily Rogers. Uh, maybe the only insider I trust more uh, really refute that because Emily Rogers leaked the original Mario plus Rabbids Kingdom Battle and has backed up Nate saying that he's legit and real and has sources and is a good dude. And from my little interactions with Nate, I can confer he's a pretty good dude. So thank you guys so much for tuning in. I am Nathaniel Rufflejance from Nintendo Prime, and I will catch you guys in that next video, which eh, who knows, might be dropping later today.